Hey, this is Jerry from Blitz Studio, and in this final tutorial for this particular bounce series, we have a lot to cover. But with everything that we're covering, we are going to be able to complete this to make it a really cool and whole game. So in, what we're gonna do is, in our last tutorial, we set up confetti, so when the player uh, wins a level, finishes a level, then we've got this confetti to use. So what we need to do is set up the win state. So there's a bunch of different things that we're gonna cover. So we're gonna set up the level number, how, so what level they're on. We're also gonna set up a number that is how many paddle hits they have to have to complete that level. Then we're gonna also set up a score for how many times they hit in that particular level. And then we're gonna update those numbers every time the game is complete. So we're gonna create a level complete UI. Then we're gonna use all of that to be able to have the user complete a level. Hit the button to restart and we're gonna update those numbers and then they'll be back to playing. This is a big one, but if you're ready to get started, let's go. And now we're back in Unity. So we need to go ahead and start setting up a couple things that I know that we're gonna uh, need in setting up a win condition. So what I wanna do is uh, we're keeping track of score so that we can kind of uh, put that up there, but there's a couple other things that we need to keep track of as well. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go into my Playmaker and global variables. Okay, so these are uh, variables that are global throughout the whole game, so no matter what scene you're in. And currently what I have in here is score, and that's what the uh, number that we're keeping track of up here. And you can see that it's an int. So again, an int is a just a number that's a whole number, no decimal point. Um, and so what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and create uh, a couple other types of variables, or another couple variables. One is I wanna keep track of what level we're on. So we can display that to the user. So level one, level two, level three, so on and so forth. And we'll just have that continually grow. And then I wanna set two more variables. One is how many points to complete that level. So if I need to have 20 points to complete it, um, and then how many points I currently have for that level. So we'll go ahead and leave this one, this score up at the top. We'll just have that be a global, um, just continually rise, rise, rise. But I, I wanna set a couple other ones so that we can have those just specifically for the level. Okay, so I know I need um, what level they're on. So I need a level count. Um, so I need a level number variable. So we'll go ahead and just call this level number. And I'm gonna have this as an int because we want it as a whole number. So we'll go ahead and add that. We'll have another number that is uh, current level count. Okay, again, that's gonna be an int. Again, we're just dealing with whole numbers right here. And then I'll have one more that's current level, got too many R's in there, current level score. Okay, so we'll have, have one of these be the max number of uh, hits that the user needs to have to complete that level. One is how many they have for specifically for that level. And then we'll have one that's just the, the number of the level. The other thing I need to do is that these all currently start out at zero. So we don't want the user to start out at level zero, right? We want them to start out at level one. So my level number, I'm gonna go, here, go ahead and put the value as one. And then how many, how many hits do they need to get to reach level two? So what's, what's the win condition? And I think how I'm gonna set this up is that every time the paddle hits the ball, they, you know, they, they get a point and one, I think in the first level, they just need to hit the paddle five times. And then the second level, six times. Third level, seven times. We'll just keep upping it by one. So we'll go ahead and start with a uh, current level count as five. And then the current level score, because they haven't hit the paddle yet, we want to leave that at zero. And what we're going to do is every time they hit the paddle, we're going to add one to that, um, to that score. Okay, so those are global variables. We've got those all set up and we're good to go. So now we can go ahead and first thing, I've got this confetti. We don't want this to show up just yet because 
Uh, we only want that to show up when they have completed a level. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And then I also need to create a UI screen for um, for win conditions. So currently we've got a UI for the score, which is up here. We've got a UI for game over. So if the paddle goes or if the ball goes past the paddle, it hits the bottom of the screen. And then we've got a UI for the power up. Let's go ahead and create a new UI. And so we'll go ahead and create a canvas. And I'm going to call this UI dash win. Okay. Or maybe we can call it level complete. Let's do that. Cool. Yeah, I like that. All right. So now let's go ahead and create what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and add a UI panel. And I'm, I think I'm not going to have the panel be the whole size of the screen here. So I'm just going to take the scale of that and take it down just a little bit. So let's just go maybe 0 0.8 and then 0.8. And we're not going to worry about the Z index. And then I want to change the background color. Let's change that to something maybe a little bit on the brighter side. And I think that looks good. Okay, so we have our panel. Let's go ahead and add some text. Now what I want to do is I want to add some text that says level. And then next to it, I want to have numbers. So what number of level that you're on or what level that you complete. And then we'll have some text that says completed or complete. And so let's go ahead and add three pieces of text. I'm going to go ahead and just use the UI Text Mesh Pro. And we'll change what these look like. So let's go level. And I'm going to go ahead and just all cap that. We'll increase the size of it. So let's make that um, maybe 60 pixels. And increase the make it bold and then I also want to just to make sure that we are centered within the screen I'm gonna take the scale of the area the text area and I'm just I dragged it to either side of the panel and then I can just hit center on my text mesh pro and it centers it cool so I've got that set up let's go ahead and just uh, move this up a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate it move it down a little bit and this is where we're going to put our level number in. So let's go ahead and just, I'm going to put XX on there. And then let's go ahead and just give this a name too. So let's go level, level, num. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, duplicate this level text again one more time. And we'll just put complete. And... Not compete, complete. There we go. Cool. All right. And then I just kind of want to center these up just a little bit. Yeah, I think that works. And the other thing that I'm going to do is to let's um, maybe make these two just kind of getting into some dot design issues here. Uh, let's make this level number even bigger. Let's go like 90. Yeah, I like that better. And then, oop, not the panel. I want to move this text down just a little bit here. Give ourselves some room. And again, this is something you can spend some time on working on the design and the look and feel. But for this, I am going to go ahead and just say that's good. Cool. All right. So now we have kind of what our panel looks like. We need to go also go ahead and figure out what it is we want to do with this panel. So if the level's complete, how do we want the user to continue, right? Does this completely stop the game and then the user has to hit a button to then continue? Or does it show up for just a short period of time, X number of seconds, and then it just goes away and the game continues? So again, depending on what type of game it is you have, how you go about you know, uh, notifying the user, um, there's a lot of different things you can do there. But I'm gonna go ahead and just put a button in here. And Let's go ahead and make a UI button with a Text Mesh Pro. And I'm going to move that down because, you know, somebody's probably playing this with their finger or their thumb. I want to have it towards the bottom of the panel so that if they have their hand holding their device, that they don't have to move their, you know, finger way up the screen. I want to have it towards the bottom where their, their finger is. 
And then we definitely want this to be a lot bigger. So I'm gonna go 350 by maybe 90. Yeah, that works pretty good, I think. We um, want to change the color here. So I'm gonna go again with some of this bright color. And let's maybe uh, put this more on that orangey yellow side. I think that looks pretty good. Nice and bright. And then uh, I also need to change the text that's inside that. So let's change this to continue. Yep, that works. And then I'll make it a little bit bigger. Let's go 40. I'll go ahead and bold it. And I definitely want to change the color. Let's go ahead and change that to that off-white. I think works pretty good. Cool. And I'll move that up just slightly. Yeah. Looking good. All right. So let's. Uh, we've got that rocking. And um, yeah, that works pretty good. I think. Cool. So now we need to go ahead and get all this stuff set up so that it works. So what I'm going to do is to. We've got our global variables. We're kind of controlling what happens with the score, all of that in the detection. So let's go ahead and go into our our managers. And we've got a score manager here, so we're updating the UI. We can also set up uh, updating level numbers, that kind of stuff. So we'll go ahead and put that in there as well. In our detection manager, so here we're updating our score in our paddle. In our score manager, you can see that we're, we're listening for when the paddle gets hit and we're adding to score. So what we can do is we can actually add to multiple things. So let's open up our global variables real quick. So global variables. And we've got the uh, the current level score, the current level count, the level number. Okay, so we know that our first level is level one. So we wanna go ahead and leave that. And then what we need to do is we have our current level count as five. That's the number that you need to get to to complete the first level. And then the level score is how many points you have currently for that specific level. So again, I'm separating that from the global level that we have up there. This is specifically just for score or for the level count, okay? Okay, so what we can do is we've got this uh, add to score, right? And we're, we're utilizing this to update the global, you know, that total number, which will just continually go up and up and up. But we wanna have one that's just specifically for each level, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is, I can go ahead and utilize this. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this. And we've got the global variable that is the count. So let's go back to our globals here. And it's the current level count. That's the one that's um, what, how many points you have to get to complete that level. So that's not the one. We wanna go ahead and use the other one, which is current level score, okay? So we're gonna add one to that each time. All right, so every time the paddles hit, it's going to add to that number. All right, so let's go, and I'm gonna add one more uh, FSM, so add FSM to score manager. And here what we're gonna do is we're going to continually check to see if the level is, uh, what the level score is, and then what the current score is. And so if our level score should be five, then we want to, once five is reached, we want to trigger the level complete and then you know maybe pause the game fire off our uh, confetti and then we're going to allow the user to start it back again and then get back going okay so let's go ahead and, and do this so what i want to do here is um, i want to continually check the current score versus the level score okay so let's go and uh, update and let's take this global out of here real quick I'm gonna go ahead and close this globals so let's close that tab because I'm uh, unable to type in here when that is open so let's go and up, update level score or maybe let's let's have that be uh, check level score okay because what we're going to do is again check and pair those two int values okay so here we have uh check level score and what we're going to do is we're going to do an int 
compare. Okay, so int compare. And what we're going to compare is in our global variables. So open that back up. What we want to check is if this current score, so, so currently it's at zero, once that number gets to this current level count, which is five, we want to have the uh, trigger that win state, okay? So what we need to do is say, hey, if this one equals this one or is greater than, then go ahead and trigger the state, okay? So what we're gonna do is in our in compare, we're gonna use those variables. So I click on the little variable button and we're gonna use our global variables. So if our current score equals the total count, whatever that number is. So you can see here is, is currently zero and then five. So if that, once that zero reaches five, then we wanna trigger a, a new state, okay? Which is then gonna do some stuff that's going to um, open up our UI, so on and so forth, okay? So here we need to add a new event under equals and we're gonna call that trigger win or let's call that level complete. I'm gonna go into my levels here or events. We'll call this level level complete. Okay, so go back over here and we need to add that, yes. And we're also gonna add use that for greater than as well. So just in case the the bounce hits a couple different times really fast, like against the side of the wall we want to be able to catch that just in case so if it's equal or greater than we want to then trigger a new state okay so here we go level complete i'm going to drag that event over okay so we have that transition over so we're going to call this level complete all right so we've got that and the first thing we need to do is to say hey if level is complete we need to open up that ui okay so let's go ahead and do that real quick so let's go activate game object. So we're gonna pop that back down in there. And we're gonna use a specific game object and that game object is our level complete UI. So we'll drag that back down and there we go. So we have, uh, we're checking the, the values of those ints. So if our current level score reaches our current level count, then we wanna go ahead and trigger our win state. So let's go back over. And what we're doing is we're opening up that game, uh, the UI. And let's go also go ahead and trigger the confetti as well. So let's go ahead and add another game object, activate. And we let's activate our confetti. And so we'll go specific game object and confetti. Okay, so what we're doing is we're checking our current score, which is currently a zero. We're checking our level count, which is at five. So once those two are equal or greater than, we want to uh, go ahead and trigger this level complete UI. And we need to make sure we're doing that every frame. Okay, so we're continually checking. So let's go ahead and give this a test real quick. Boom. Boom. Two. Boom. 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 Three. There we go, boom. boom. We've now triggered our Dream. level complete. So now we also need to do a couple other things and that's one is um, we need to set up so that the ball and the paddle don't continue to, to move. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the paddle and the ball off. So here where we're activating the UI and activating the confetti, I want to deactivate the ball and the paddle. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just add two more activation states here and uh, that got dropped in the middle which is it doesn't really matter let's move that down here real quick I'm just going to copy and paste that so I have another one so here I want to specify the game owner and I'm going to use the uh, controller so I'm going to go ahead and turn the controller off and deactivate that and then I also want to turn the ball off so I'm gonna deactivate that one as well. And then now let's give that a try. Boom. Now I'm completely disregarding Boom. the complete Boom. score up there. Boom. Boom. Just because I wanna just Boom. show Boom. using um, 
this other score. Okay, so we triggered that. Our ball's gone away. Our paddle's gone away. We've triggered our, our wind state and we've triggered our confetti. Okay, so that's good. All right, so let's do this. Um, currently, that confetti plays through and then it's continually looping. So we want to turn looping off of that real quick. So I'm going to turn looping off. So that should only just play once now and that and then be good. Um, the other thing that we want to do here is let's go back to our manager here. Um, so I'm activating the UI, I'm activating the confetti, I'm deactivating the paddle, and I'm deactivating the ball. So the next thing I need to do is to, in the UI, let's go ahead and open that up real quick. We have this number, and I want that to be, use the total level number, or what level that we're on. So I need to continually update that. So let's go ahead and, in our score manager here, I'm gonna go ahead and we've got some of this uh, that we're already using for the score. So let's just, first I need to enable, name this FSM real quick. So let's go uh, uh, level complete. We have a update UI FSM. So let's go over into that real quick. So here we're updating the UI continually. We can also go ahead and just use this to update this as well. So we have all this stuff in here already. Convert into string, set up property. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna copy both of these. So let's just, I'm gonna collapse them, copy those, go ahead and paste those down. But this time what we're gonna do is not update our score, we're gonna update the level number. So the level number, which is this number right here, we want to update that with whatever our level is. And then we're gonna go ahead and set the property of that. And let's just go ahead and um, choose the, let's go ahead and delete that. This is not score text. We need to create a new variable with level number. Okay. So this is the global variable and this is the variable that's in just this FSM. And we're gonna update that every frame and then I need to take this text right here and then drag that down so we can update it. So in my level complete, um, which is this second piece of text, no, it's level num right here. That's the text we wanna update. So let's go back to our score manager. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this. Drag our level num down. And it's saying, hey, what do you wanna do with it? I wanna update the text mesh pro. I'm gonna set a property. And then I wanna update the text. So I have a big long list of items here that we can update. So I'm gonna update the text with a string and it's gonna be the, the level number. So I uncheck the variable right here so we can use the variable that we have level number. And I'm gonna update that every frame. Okay, so now if I play this and it goes to five, it should say level one here, okay? So let's give that a test real quick. Yep, says level oh, one, perfect. Um, That's exactly what we need. So now we can go ahead and turn this off because we don't. We only need that on when it's, when it's set up. So let's do this. Once we, um, let's go back to our score manager and let's unlock real quick. Go to our level complete. We wanna do a couple more things here. So currently we've turned on our UI, we've, uh, turned on our confetti, we've uh, uh, deactivated the controller, we've deactivated the ball. Then we need to go to another state to do some other things. So I wanna go ahead and just, let's go to a transition of finished. And then we're gonna go to a new state here. So just drag off to a new state. And here what we wanna do is to do some updating of those numbers. So. If we're currently just completed level one, we then need to go to level two. So let's, uh, we need to update that global variable number. So let's go update numbers. That works. And what numbers is it that we want to update? Well, we want to do an int add. Oops, not end add, int add. 
and the int that we want to add to is our level number. So we've got that global variable of current level, so current level number or level number. So that's the number that shows up in our UI. We want to add one to that. So then we're on level two. And we don't want to update every frame, just update once. Okay, so the other int that we need to add to is, uh, again, this is kind of like determined uh, by how you want to create your own levels. But for me, what I want to do is this level count that's at five, I want to add to that. So level two, it's going to be six. Level three, it's going to be seven, so on and so forth. So just continually add one each time. So what I'm going to do is to, I'll just copy this and paste. So instead of adding to level number, we're going to add to our level count. Okay. So instead of um, I want to add one, and this should be one as well. So what I want to do is my level number, update that by one. So instead of one, it's going to be two, and instead of three, it's going to be four, so on and so forth. Every time we win uh, or complete a level, it's just going to be updated by one. Same thing with the current level count. Instead of five, it'll be six. Instead of six, it'll be seven, so on and so forth. Again, we're not checking every frame here. We only want to update them once at that level complete state okay so we've got that going on um, is there anything else we want to do here I'm trying to decide probably not and then what I want to do is I want to uh, do a short wait it allows us to complete our confetti um, and then we want to be able to have the user be able to click the start button or continue button to then reactivate everything and get going again okay so let's give this a um, I'm gonna go ahead and add a transition of finished we'll go to a wait state so here I'm gonna go and wait and then this one we will do a wait and I know that 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 transition or that animation lasts for five seconds so we'll go ahead and just leave it at five seconds okay so then when it's then when it's done I want to go ahead and um, let's do a finished event let's go ahead and add that and then I'm going to go to one more state and what we're going to do here is just listen to see if somebody clicks on that button okay so let's go and uh, let's have this be continue and we'll we need to take that UI button that we have so this button oops let's go ahead and lock that FSM so I'm going to take that button that's in there and I want to listen to if somebody's clicked on it. Okay, so I'm going to drag that over into my state here and then button a UI. So here we're going to do a UI get button on click event. So UI, UI button on click event. So cool. So we've got that. So we're, what we're doing is we're just listening to if somebody clicks on that button. And then if somebody clicks on that button, then we want to undo all the, everything that we've just done. We've like we de deactivated the ball, we activated the, um, everything that we deactivated, we wanna reactivate and vice versa, okay? So we'll do a state here, and then um, when, we need to go ahead and create an, an event here, so let's go a reset level, and I'll go ahead and add that, and here we will reset level and then here we'll do a finished event and just go straight back to our level checking level score okay so here what we need to do is we activated the UI activated the confetti we deactivated the controller and deactivated the ball so I need to go ahead and reset all of those so what I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse all of these here real quick I'm going to select them all copy I'm going to go ahead and go over my reset level and paste and then um, the, the items that I activated, I'm going to deactivate. So I'm going to deactivate the UI, deactivate the confetti, and then I'm going to reactivate the controller and reactivate the ball. Okay. And then the ball, I also need to actually reset to that start position up here. So um, currently, let's go ahead and click on the ball. Let's go ahead and lock that in the ball. We want that to be set at position of 0, 5, 3, and, or 5.3 and 0. So let's go ahead and take the ball 
and um, set that transform here real quick. So we're just drag that right down into our state and we're going to set property. And here we want to, what is it that we want to set? We want to set the position. So we're going to set the vector three of this. So that's that zero, 5.3 and zero. So zero, 5.3 and zero. And then we are going to go back to checking to see what our numbers are. Okay. And then this should, instead of be five, and then the second, the second level should be six. Okay. So we've kind of got a lot of complex things going on here. So let's just run through them real quick. So in our level score, we are checking to see what the current score is and what the number to complete the level is. So currently on the first one, it's five, and then we're going to update that to six, so on forth, so on and so forth. Then if it's equal or uh, greater than that number, this number right here, we're going to go to level complete, which we're activating the UI, activating the confetti, deactivating the controller, deactivating the ball. Once those are done, we're going to go to updating the numbers. So we're going to update our level number by one. We're going to update our current count by one. Then we're going to wait for five seconds to make sure that our, our confetti has finished. Then we're going to just sit and wait for the user to click on that button to then make our UI go away. So in our uh, reset level, we're making our UI go away, we're making our confetti go away, and we're then also uh, making reactivating our ball, reactivating our controller, and then we're resetting the ball to the beginning position. So let's give this a go to see what if that works or not. Okay, so let's go ahead and play. So there we go. We completed our level. Ball got deactivated. Game controller got deactivated. We opened up our confetti. It played once. And then we're, we're just stuck on the wind screen. Now if I click, click continue, our ball should pop back up here. And we should have our controller back and the UI goes away, confetti goes away. Game over. Yeah. So we've that ball was uh, going really fast at the at the end of its activation cycle. We deactivated and reactivated it, and now we need to set the velocity of that to zero as well, um, because you saw it went super fast. So something we'll have to check here. So here we're setting the ball's property, and I think because it was lower on the screen, and then we moved it up. Um, with our resetting the property here, the it actually contained that velocity of moving up, hit the top of the screen, and then move down super fast. So what we need to do is reset the velocity of that back down to zero. So set velocity of the ball. So of the ball and velocity of that we're just going to set that to um, to be zero so we'll uncheck these numbers leave them as zero and then we should be good to go give that a try real quick again sometimes it's just you gotta figure out what's what's happening boom, and boom. how we're gonna fix it boom. Boom. We got four, boom, boom. five, there we go, level complete. And let's go ahead and click continue. So we're waiting on five seconds. There boom. we go, now we're back to, ah, I see something I didn't do was to reset my count. Um, ah, there we go. So that's another thing we need to do. Um, let's see here. My count that I've got here, my current level score count, my global variable, um, it's at zero and I want to reset that to be zero so that we can then continually go up each time So if it's not at zero when we're checking these doing this compare You know checking if one is equal to the other It's automatically going to trigger the win win state because it's already at that number, right? We didn't reset it. So we actually need to reset that number 
down to zero. So current level score, once we hit level complete, right here, we need to go ahead and, or here where we're updating our numbers, we need to take that number, which is the current level score, we need to reset that to zero. So here we're gonna do um, int, yeah, here we go, set int value. So we're gonna use that. So that current level score, I think that's the one we're using, right? Current level score, yeah, we wanna reset that to zero. Okay, so here the int value is zero. Then that way we're, we're starting at zero. Um, again, that's not this number up here, it's how many times the paddle has to, to be hit for that particular level, okay? So here we go, give this a try again. Boom, 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 boom. So there we go, level two. We have that complete. Let's check our global, our global variables here. Um, our current level score is now back to zero. And then the next level, we have to complete six hits and we're at level two. So that's exactly what we need. So let's go ahead and click continue. Boom. Boom. And I might take that weight Boom. down to four seconds instead of Boom. Five, boom. I think five is a little bit too long. You boom. might want to just like continue. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Sir, so now we're on level three. Hit continue. Boom, 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 boom. boom. And there we're now on level four. Cool, so we can just like continue play and play and play and we've got to create this level state. So let's go over this real quick because I know there's a lot that we did in this particular demo. First, we created a couple um, global variables. We created one for level count. So this is how many hits the player has to hit the paddle with um, to complete the level. Then we need to see, then we have like how many times the, the user has hit the paddle and then what level the user is on. So we added those three, those are all int values. And then we've created this uh, score manager for level complete. And it has a bunch of different states, so we'll go through these real quick. So we're in the first state, all we're doing is checking what the number is of how many times they have to hit the paddle to complete that level how many times they actually have hit the paddle, and if those two are equal or greater than, then it's going to cause the win state, okay? So in our level complete, we're activating our level complete UI, we're activating the confetti, we're deactivating the controller, deactivating the ball, then we're going to update our numbers, so we're going to add to our level number, so instead of being level one, we're gonna be at level two, then we're also um, adding to our how many uh, hits do we need to complete the level. So instead of initially starting at five, we're gonna go to six. And then we're resetting the how many hits have they had that level to zero. So that way we can always continually start from zero and go up. Once we've reset those, we're waiting for just the, um, make sure the confetti has completed and then we're going to listen for if the user has hit the, the uh, continue button. Then we're going to reactivate the, or deactivate the level complete UI, deactivate the confetti, reactivate the controller, reactivate the ball, and then we're right back to going and playing again. So there we go. I know it was a ton of information in this particular demo, but this actually makes it so that you can have a fairly complete game. And there you go. Whew. Man, that was a lot of stuff that we accomplished in that one. I know it was a lot. Hopefully you stuck with me the whole time, but now you should have a game that's fairly complete and you can utilize this kind of information to complete your own games, which is awesome. And I sure hope that everyone shares these tutorials. I wanna get this out there and complete more and more 
of these tutorials for you. Again, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next tutorial is available. Until next time, peace.